My name is Ross Brown from Ice Graph Access Solutions. We're here in South Queen's Ferry today. I'm going to take you a little walk around one of our biggest projects to date. I've got the fourth road bridge behind me where we've been contracted to do an underdeck scaffolding system. We're going to put a few videos and walk around our current projects, put them together and make a small series inside Ice Graph. <music> contracted in by Miller Callahan Engineering to provide a <coughs> under deck scaffold system to full width of the bridge over 120 metres, almost nearing the end of the job um, from an erecting it point of view anyway, so it's not a bad time to bring you up and have a look around the project. Traditionally this has been done by the tube and fitting scaffold, so we've proposed a different system, we're using layer all around on it, more so the new flex beam system. Our biggest sort of objective for the client was to give them a really big open space, working platform, minimum droppers in the way, reduce the brace in obstruction so that they've got a really big clear work area and the layer flex beam system just really allows us to do that. So together with myself and our um, supervision team and the, the, the layer design team, we came up with this bespoke structure utilising the flexbeam system. It's been absolutely brilliant um, for giving the Miller Callahan this open work space, but not more of that is reducing the weight on the bridge, also reducing the amount of components that we need compared to traditional tube and fitting. It's about 40% uh, less weight and volume uh, and less kit, so manual handling is reduced, transport is reduced. I'm just trying to show them you know, a more efficient structure. <laughs> In between you lads. No, this is our supervisor John Campbell. John's going to be wearing a GoPro, he's going to give you some inside footage of where a scaffolder's view of erecting the underdeck scaffolding system on the fourth road bridge. Right, down to me. Uh. Take it through, we up. All of the up. Pins in the hole. Yes. Huh? Leave them in the room. No, I'll leave them in the room. Just go over here. Right, that's it. That's you out. Down. That's it, lads. That's wonderful. He didn't cry much. I'm, I'm sure he's been crying much. Huh? Slide the roll, boys.
Uống được đấy ạ Ô, oh, hông được rồi It's the morning of the last day of filming of the capturing footage for Inside Ice Gap. So, guys are all finished up on the bridge. Uh, it's the first. It's the first day that it's all been all the surplus materials is cleared off, and I'm going to be leaving. Just doing the, this wee recap in the office in my house before I leave to go and pick up Andrew, the videographer. So, it's. Um, I realised it was so much hard work trying to capture all this stuff uh, and footage and stuff like that to create the series. So it's been a, an eye opener for for me exactly how much work goes into it to capture all this, the, the good footage and all that sort of stuff with the guys working. And uh, I was really hoping that a lot more of the guys were quite happy to speak on on camera and stuff, but they some of them are a wee bit shy, so. Aye, but it would have been good to get a lot of the guys on because to be fair, te testament to, to all the men involved in the job, um, it wouldn't be what it was, what it is without them. You know, um, from the yard guys setting out the kit, the support for the layer, the designs, and everything else that's in, it goes in, into a project of this scale from design, the management, estimation, materials, transport, the lorry drivers have been. Our HGV drivers have been great. I've jumped on the lorry myself a few times, helping out, short notice. You know, we've not got a massive laydown area on the bridge and stuff. So from, from the yard guys, right up to the scaffolders installing the stuff, the work has been tremendous. The guys have been doing, you know, long hours, 12 days on, two days off at the weekend. A lot of our guys are from the north of Scotland. John, our supervisor, John Campbell, he comes from, yeah, originally he's from, from Stornoway, but he lives in Inverness. So, at the weekends, he's got, you know, it's, it's a long way for him to go back up the road to see his family and the same with Davy Clark, he's away up in Peterhead and Terry and Jimmy for Glasgow, so mixed guys on the job from all over and it's, uh, you know, 12 days on, 2 days off, it's good to let them away up the road, but the workmanship that's been going on in this project, the way that their guys just conduct themselves, it's been an absolute testament to the, the way we, we try and run things here at Icegaff and it wouldn't be the job wouldn't be what it was without the guys, um, the guys' ethic and work ethic and, and experience and stuff like that. So, you know, what, what we've done with the project, we're averaging around yeah. nine to ten guys on the job. No accidents or incidents throughout the whole, whole installation process. No dropped objects, which was one of the you know high risk factors on it because we're working over water, working over a main shipping lane. Although we did have catch nets. Um, and, and we did have a method in, you know, of a way to recover anything that was dropped, but it never happened. And it's an absolute testament to the guys that are on it. So I'm looking forward to getting out there um, today to, to see the finished article. Um, and it's all 100% handed over um, to the client. And it'll be, it's great to show you. So, like I say, on my way to pick up Andrew, the videographer, we're going to head over up and... Uh, have a little walk around and then I do believe we're going to be going heading over to, to, to Lair today as well just to, to do a wee bit, a couple of bits and bobs but yeah even the, with, with Andrew as well, the amount of work that goes into capturing all the stuff for the video, for, uh, for just to bring this episode to you, it's been um, a, bit of, a bit of work involved in it, I never knew when we started it how much work went into it just to bring, hopefully bring you a 15 minute episode or whatever it is it's going to work out at you know it's it nice to be short and sharp and I, I wanted it to be not too polished which is hopefully what's going to come across as you know I, I'm not a big we're not a big fan of the, 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 the polished stuff so hopefully Andrew took on our uh, you know at the brief before when we told him what we we're trying to achieve with this and um, hopefully it comes out like that and I hope that 
you know, the final episode when we, we do get the final stuff done today and it's edited, it looks, it looks good when it's done. Hey guys, I've just finished doing all the housekeeping. We're going to have a quick walk around, show you the 100% finished structure. The guys have successfully installed 4,484 square metres of completely underslung flex beam layer system. Let's go and see the finished article. That was a walk through the finished structure just to show you all the com uh, completed and trying and exactly taking the scale for it. It's been hard to, to take in photos to the scale. So I'm hoping that the walkthrough, walk through the camera, cut back and forward a few clips and let you see if you take it in. We jump in the car now, we're going to head through to Layers Head Office in Livingston and I'm going to talk through some of the components for you so that you've got a bit more better understanding. I wanted to come and basically explain the proprietary components to the layer system that we're using on the bridge, just so that when you're watching through the open footage, you've got a general idea of how the stuff goes together. So the whole system for us is made up of nine proprietary components across the whole structure. It doesn't change. Um, and I just wanted to explain to you the, the components and how they go together for a bit of understanding and some information. So this is the main component of the whole suspended system. This is the layer flex beam. Uh, it's 280 millimetres deep and approximately two and a half times stronger than a standard alloy lattice beam. So this is where we really gain the, you know, it gives us the benefit and makes us have the, the large standard spacings. So I'm gonna go through a couple of the other components just so you've got a general idea of the, the parts and how they go together. I'm gonna to start assembling bits and bobs so you can see how it goes in. So the other next part we've got here is the flex beam spigot or flex beam connector. This is used for joining the beam so it slides in until you've lined the holes up. And we've got the flex beam pins, connectors that, that slide through. get fixed in the back with securing our pin. So when you're joining the beams together, your next flex beam will join on here. Four pins on each side to secure it. Just take that back out again. That persuasion. The next main part that we use is probably the most important part is the suspension shoe. So the suspension shoe is, slides over the beam and the same again. When it's in position, the flex beam pin, securing pin, if I get the holes lined up. Goes through and again, same as other, is the flex beam connector pins. It's just secured with an R pin connector. So the next component is a female standard adapter, which again, slides over the top, links into the shoe. It's hammered through and again secured with an R pin. You'll notice the sticker on this one's different. So any of the layer components with a white sticker are specially made. So together with Kenny Redman at Layer, we've um, modified this so that the rosette enables the British regulation handrail height to come in. Um, and we had them specially made and um, chipped over for the project. The next part is a standard all round layer upright, slides over and 
had more than one hand. There's also pinned in place. And that's it. And then to allow us to uh, suspend it, swivel wedge head couplers, fixed to the standard. And then a standard scaffold tube up onto beam clamps onto the steelwork. And that's just repeated throughout the whole project. So the speed and efficiency for us afterwards is that the flex beam's already got a, a U track for the layer deck or board to fit into. So once the flex beams are in place, the boards just simply all fit in, can be slided out from either side to reduce working on an open edge. You can just work away and slide the boards out until you're fully completed. Once the board's in place, the lockable lay low goes on top, tightens down, and that's it, that's your structural beam, fully complete, ready for the next one. And we just continue on. Further to that, we've got one extra component that we made, which is, it is another beam connector, a different type, it sits over, rather than slides through, so it can be installed after all the standards are installed, and it just simply goes over the top and again, it's fixed in place with two pins, two R-clips. And like I said, these ones can be fitted afterwards just because the shoe doesn't have to slide over it. But that's it. That's the nine proprietary components that we've used for the whole project. So it's time now to sign off on the end of episode one of Inside Icecalf. We've showed you the beginning, the middle and the end of a fourth road bridge project. A lot of behind the scenes things which I hope you've enjoyed. We're going to start working on episode two. Hope to bring it to you soon.